Psychologists have come up with another theory to describe personality, and that is the trait theory. And this is a really straightforward approach to describe personality. It defines personality in terms of identifiable patterns of behavior. So it describes traits instead of explaining them, which is what the psychoanalytic theory by Freud does. So let's ask the question, what is a trait? Well, a trait is someone's consistent char characteristic behavior. So it's really important. It has to be consistent. And it's a behavior. So it's a consistent charact characteristic behavior as well as a conscious motive, as opposed to the unconscious that Freud talks about in the psychoanalytic theory. So trait theorists say that we all possess the same traits, but the degree to which the traits are shown in a person varies, and it can be quantified. So for example, I may be relatively friendly, and you may be relatively unfriendly, but we both have the friendliness trait, even though my degree of friendliness is a little higher. So let's talk about the first theorist, Gordon Alport, that tried to describe the trait theory. So Alport came up with a list of 4,500 different descriptive words, and that's the short list. His original list had over 10,000. So he came up with 4,500 descriptive words to describe a trait. But then he decided that he need to organize, needed to organize these traits into three basic categories. So he put these traits into three basic categories, and the first was called the cardinal trait category. So he defined cardinal traits to be traits of single characteristics that directs most of a person's activities. So, for example, he said that a cardinal trait would be a power-hungry person that focuses just on control, or a totally selfless woman that directs all her energy towards humanitarian activities. Well, he figured out that no one can have just one character characteristic trait, just a single one. He said that many people possess a handful of traits. So he called these handful of traits their major traits. And these are what we call the central traits. So central traits could be honesty, sociability. And then he went on further to say we have secondary traits. And the secondary traits are only found in certain situations. So they're seen, um, they're seen fewer, basically. So an example of these would be a love for modern art or a reluctance to eat meat. Those are our secondary traits. So moving forward with the trait theory, we have two other theorists that tried to also describe the trait theory. And the first one was Raymond Cattell. So Raymond Cattell used a statistical method called factor analysis. So by using factor analysis, he was able to find out that there were 16 pairs of source traits. So 16 pairs of sor source traits that we all possess and that represent the basic dimensions of personality. So he actually turned this into a personality test, which he called the 16 Personality Factor Questionnaire, or 16PF for short. But then we have Hans Eysenck on the other hand. And Eysenck said that there are three major dimensions of personality. And these three major dimensions are one, extroversion. So extroversion is the degree of our sociability. He said we all possess another dimension, which is neuroticism. And neuroticism is related to our emotional stability. And then there's a third, and that's psychotism. And psychotism is the degree to which our reality is distorted. So both these theorists presented or possess something in common. They tried to 
factor out personality and looked at specific traits, specific factors they called or a combination of traits that underlie people's responses in certain situations. Now the third part of the trait theory is called the big five. And the big five says that all of these categories of traits are found in pe people of all populations. So across all ages, across all genders, across um, people from all different parts of the world. So the first part of the big five is openness. So what I mean by openness is openness to an experience. So this asks the questions, are you independent or are you conforming? Are you imaginative or are you practical? The second is conscientiousness. Well, that's a long word to spell. So conscientiousness asks the questions, are you careful or are you careless? Are you disciplined or are you impulsive? Are you organized or are you disorganized? The third is extroversion. So most of us know what this means. Are you probably been either called an extrovert or an introvert? So when we're looking at extroversion, we're asking the questions, are you talkative or are you quiet? Are you fun loving or are you sober? The fourth is agreeableness. So agreeableness asks the questions, are you kind or are you cold? Are you appreciative or are you unfriendly? And the last one is called neuroticism, which is just the same as what Ising said. So neuroticism asks the questions, are you stable or, or are you tense? Are you calm or are you anxious? So the best way to remember the big five here is to remember this acronym, OCEAN, O-C-E-A-N. So there you have it. Those are the three main components of the trait theory, all come up by many different psychologists.